Welcome back to Creating Cooperative Kids. I'm your host, Bill Corbett. If you're just joining us, regular viewers of this show know that I use this segment to answer viewer questions that come into my email box. Now to send me your parenting questions, simply send an email to questions at cooperativekids.com and perhaps I'll select yours in a future episode. In the question for today's show, the parent writes, my seven-year-old son has been kicked off of the school bus for flashing the middle finger. What would be the best punishment for this behavior? The parent comes to me and asks me a question like this because they're at wit's end. Probably what happened with this parent, the school said, if it happens again, your kid's going to be walking to school. And the assumption is this parent probably gives their ch child a, a ride to school if they can't take the bus. The first thing that I tell parents in a situation like this, whenever they get a report from school that your child is doing this, what makes it difficult is we cannot, as parents, control what goes on in the school environment. In fact, some behaviors are often seen in a school environment or a school bus and they're not seen at home because it's, it's, the surroundings are conducive for creating that behavior. So it can be very stressful for parents. But you can do things about situations that do happen outside of your control, especially in a situation like this. So one of the first things that I told the parent in this situation is that it, it, you've got to sit down with a child and help them explain or, or explain to them and help them understand that this behavior is not okay. But we can't get angry with the child because if you get angry, then you're going to ruin the communication channels. Uh, you must tell the child that this kind of behavior is not okay uh, in any situation and reinforce the fact that because you can't tolerate, because you won't tolerate it as a parent, then something may have to happen as a result of it. It's more important than ever to make sure that we manage our emotions when we're talking to our child about the situation. So we're going to assume for this situation that the child was kicked off of the bus. Now the parent does have a situation they can do something about. Now the parent has to give a child the ride to school and pick them up for probably, I'm guessing, what a school might do, maybe a week or two that the child is banned from, from the school bus. That the parent can do something about. Now the, ch the parent has something tangible that they can discuss with a child and say, look, because of what you did on the school bus, now I have to go into work late and I now have to spend gas and time to give you a ride. Therefore, there's going to be a consequence for the next two weeks. And what you can do about that is because you're now inconvenienced, things that you might have done with that time, the child might have to take over. So at a very respectful consequence, some chores or tasks that the child, especially it's even better if the child doesn't like them, that the, that the child would have to take these things over as a result of their behavior with the school bus incident. That in itself will send a very clear message to the child that there's a consequence tied to your behavior. And, and, and I'm always talking to parents about consequences. What makes them very effective is that the consequence has to be tied directly to the behavior. So let's step back for a minute. The child is flashing the middle finger to friends on the school bus you know what, you really can't apply a consequence to that. You can tell the child that that kind of behavior is not okay. But now that you've got something tangible with having to give the child a ride, you can do something about that. Keep that in mind. Whenever you use consequences with children, rule number one is you remain calm and respectful with the child. And then you clearly identify your issues with it and you've got to narrow it down to something specific. So in the situation with uh, these parents and their question to me that the child would now have to take on some chores. When you do have to apply a consequence, um, it, it make sure that you also contribute to the relationship to, between the parent and the child. So if you're speaking calmly to the child and respectful, the child is more likely to listen to you but see, that's the problem with anger. If we get, we get angry and the old school for punishment is make the child pay for what they did. 
consequences aren't designed to make the child pay, to feel bad. It's, they're actually designed to make the child f take responsibility. It's a lesson. It's an opportunity for a life lesson. So consequences work really well when they're implemented effectively. Remember, when your child misbehaves, consequences work effectively, but only when they are related directly to the misbehavior, not even remotely. As I mentioned in the first segment, punishment is an old tool that no longer works, nor does it contribute to a positive and healthy relationship between the parent and the child. So let's review what else we learned in today's show. We met Diane Darren, the author of the new book, uh, And the Winner Is, which equates awesome parents to awesome kids. Uh, we met uh, teachers uh, Dennis Fenton and Robert Chasen talked about the importance of more men in the field of teaching in hopes of inspiring more young men to step up. And then we also met elite life coach Bernadette Bolton who offered tips for parents on how to de-stress, realign their life goals for greater happiness. Join me for future episodes of this program as I offer more tools to help you rebuild your discipline toolbox as an awesome parent or teacher. If you'd like to get this program in your local viewing area, contact my office to find out how. See, making the world a better place to live begins at home as engaged, encouraged, and masterful parents. I'm Bill Corbett, and I'll see you the next time on Creating Cooperative Kids.